Welcome to Don't Say Adulting. It's the show where we seek out advice from friends, family, and professionals on the daily tasks of adulthood. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Don't Say Adulting. I'm Jane O'Connor, as usual, mm-hmm. um, but today I'm joined by a special guest host, Javi Zubi Zaretta, who is the director here at Grotto Network. That is correct. I'm very excited to be here. Thanks yeah. for having me. Thanks for coming on. Um, we're talking today about fitness, mm-hmm. getting into shape. Yeah. How do you do that if, you know, how do you do that in your busy nine to five, 40 hour <laughs> work week? Um, yeah, I think w- when I was trying to think of this question, it's just like, I want to get into shape, but mm-hmm. I know nothing. Sure. You know? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how much time I have for this. Um, do you feel like you had kind of a journey? Oh, <laughs> did I have a journey <laughs> over hills and valleys and through the woods? I'm and just seeing flashbacks <laughs> in the back of your. <laughs> He's silent. For oh, <laughs> yeah. No, uh, I had a lot, uh, a long journey to fitness. Mm-hmm. Um, I am in a place now, I'm 35, and I think I can confidently say that I'm probably the healthiest I've ever been in my life in terms of fitness and other things Mm -hmm. um and it was a journey to get there when i was 25 i was not there i was very far from there i was a sickly child growing up i had asthma and scoliosis i wore a back brace it was a whole thing Mm. so the gym scary athletics scary yeah all those things not for me yeah well i feel like the scary part that's the Mm. thing that really Mm -hmm. i've now you know started to get into it a little bit i luckily have a good friend Mm -hmm. who's who's more ahead of me on the journey and great taken me along um but the big thing was the self-conscious scary angle i feel like even if you're not a sickly child with a back brace (laughs) you can still and this is (laughs) not trying to belittle that experience even if you're a feeble child (laughs) on the streets (laughs) it's scary for everyone it is we all know we should exercise we all know it's good for us we don't need to be told that anymore but i think you're absolutely right of going to a gym that's packed with people Mm -hmm. and you see people who are clearly very very fit and very knowledgeable of what they're doing yeah um it's super intimidating and it's much easier to stay home and not yeah do those things yeah and yeah do you feel like you had a bit of a how did you get over the self-consciousness um my dad had open heart surgery <laughs> hey that'll <laughs> i'm gonna bring the drama today yeah. to this podcast. <laughs> no and uh but i i spent some time with him thankfully he was all good and he, mm. he was um all good and But that said, I saw what uh, a cardiac intensive care unit looked like. And Mm. I said to myself, Javi, you need to make life changes because you don't ever want to be here. Mm -hmm. And so that gave me a real existential push to say, you need to figure out how to make this work. Because I always wanted to look fit. I always wanted to be fit. Mm. That was always there. Yeah. But having that bigger recognition that like, oh, right. My body could decay. Yeah. <laughs> Will decay. Yeah. So I don't care if people are staring at me at the gym <laughs> right now. <laughs> Except I do. I always do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the part. Luckily my friend kind of brought me along. That was a real help. Yeah. You know, just to not oh, yeah. I feel like there's something even if you're not in the gym, you're just at a party when you're alone and you yes. suddenly are flooded yes. with thoughts of like yes. what do I look like from every angle right now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There are multiple cameras over here and all I'm thinking about is do I look <laughs> fit on the ex on the exercise <laughs> episode. So yeah, well, and hopefully we'll, we can get some good tips from uh, our guests today. Yeah. Um, we've got Caitlin and Joanna from Rec Sports here Great. at Notre Dame yeah. uh, who are going to come on, chat to us about getting into shape, how to fit that into your your young adult life in college. I just I had a lot of friends taking a weightlifting class. Sure. I, like, I should probably learn that strength training is important, um, but I just thought, oh, I'll do that later on. It's always easier well, later. I also, Always easier. <laughs> things get easier as you get older <laughs> is the lesson. That's what I've heard. <laughs> I don't know why you're laughing. Uh, no. <laughs> yeah, especially when it comes to, you know, making your body change. Yeah. yeah it's super easy. Did you start at 25? Uh, let's see. I started when I moved back here to South Bend, which is 26. Mm-hmm. And I'm very glad that we have folks from Rec Sports because I got a trainer from uh, Rec Sports okay. um, to help me in my journey. Because as you said, Doing it alone is tough. Yeah. Having someone who knows what they're doing is great. Yeah. And, um, but yeah, that's when I started. And my intention, my thought was like, oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to have a six pack in a month. 
No. Yeah, it was a really hard day for me when I learned that a lot of the aesthetic <laughs> part comes with a combination of yeah. exercise and diet. Yeah. And I was like, it's one or the other right now. And genetics. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and many other factors. Yeah. Um, but yeah, hopefully, you know, we can get some tips on health, yeah. fitness. Great. Just how to fit that into your daily routine. So stick around. Uh, we'll be joined by Caitlin and Joanna here on Don't Say Adulting. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Don't Say Adulting. Uh, thanks for sticking with us through that very short intermission. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we are now joined by Joanna Reiner and Caitlin Kiger from Rec Sports here at Notre Dame. Uh, thanks so much for coming on the show. Yeah, happy to be here. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, as we've been discussing a little bit before, we're talking about fitness, how to get into shape, um, how to overcome my deep fear <laughs> <laughs> of social stigma in the gym. <laughs> yep. The insecurities, the worries. Yeah. Yeah, the and laziness. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and also just how to get ripped. No, we don't have to get into that. Um, I guess right off the bat, um, the big thing I kept thinking of with this was how do you fit it into, you know, for a lot of, for me, for our audience, mm -hmm. just started maybe a full-time job for the first time and maybe have on top of that zero experience with the gym and fitness. How would you go about getting started, mm -hmm. fitting that into your schedule, going to the gym, getting some exercise into your day? Yeah, so um, the first and foremost thing you got to do is find something you really enjoy doing mm. because if you don't love it, then you're probably not going to go back to it. So whether that be one of our programs like group fitness or personal training, someone to get you going, or maybe it's just I like to lift heavy things and put them down. I don't really want anybody yeah. to talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay too. Um, but you got to find something that you really, really like. And then once you found that, uh, it's all about timing, just like you would time anything else. So you got to work it into your schedule, um, just like you would with your classes, right? As a student, thinking back to that mm -hmm. and, um, okay, I need to make sure I get this done by this time. So I'm going to block out this hour. You need to block out that hour too. It's just as important to get that stuff done as it is to prioritize your health. Okay. Yeah, I feel like for me, when I was trying to get started, there's all these things I've tried and failed, like running mm -hmm. and other exercise yeah. um what if you don't like working out and it hurts and it's <laughs> painful and you feel silly doing zumba yeah, <laughs> yeah. what if nothing feels fun how do you start or find something that works for you yeah i i do truly believe that there is something for everybody okay. um you just gotta find your your crew right mm -hmm. your your tribe so um, for me, it's in those classes mm -hmm. and it's finding a group of people that like to do the same movements I do, or maybe they just like the same thing socially mm -hmm. as I do. And that makes it a little more fun. Mm -hmm. I don't think as much about how much my legs burn in a spin class mm -hmm. when I'm next to my best friend, yeah. right? So it's, it's really about finding other ways to enjoy it, even mm -hmm. if maybe the actual physical activity may kind of suck yeah, in yeah, that yeah. moment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you all teach or slash coach uh, at the gym? Can you give us a little bit of background on your uh, personal areas? Sure. Yeah. Um, so uh, I teach a lot of different types of classes mm -hmm. or I'm certified in a lot of types of classes. Mm -hmm. But right now I teach beat biking, which is okay. a lot of fun. What is beat biking? Yeah. So it's a spin class, mm -hmm. except uh, everything's to music. Mm -hmm. So you get to sort of connect with the beat a little bit. Uh, I enjoy it because I can be a little creative with mm -hmm. making my playlists. Yeah. Like this week is a theme week for us and we're doing <laughs> a green week. Cool. So no reds allowed, obviously. <laughs> Um, yes. Uh, <laughs> so I had a bunch of green theme songs okay. and football theme songs and yeah, it was a lot of fun. I actually made my class sing Sweet Caroline at one point. So, Classic. um, exactly, exactly. <laughs> and sometimes that's enough to get people excited yeah. is, is, Hey, there's going to be a good playlist. I can survive the next 45 minutes. Okay. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I actually started out with like the Zumbas, you know, the, the mm -hmm. silly movements. Yeah. Um, but trying to transition also into that, those cycle classes. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, a lot of it was just moving my body, knowing that I'm going to look maybe a little bit sillier. So that's mm -hmm. why we can dim the lights, put the party lights <laughs> on, know that nobody's really watching you either. Sure. Um, but it, it's it's one of those things where you find that community, Yeah. Um, which which is really, really nice to find. Too. Yeah. That is, I feel like the music angle, this is a bit of a, an aside, but because I have headphones on for some much of my job i don't listen to music at the gym and i feel like a crazy person <laughs> i feel like people look at me lifting weights just silently <laughs> yeah but so i need to do one where it's out in the open more there you, you know? go yeah mm -hmm. um okay so there's the enjoyment factor for picking something that you enjoy doing should you 
take into consideration um, cardio versus strength in terms of what you're looking like long term health or is there one that's more important that you should prioritize? Is that is it more just the enjoyment factor once again? Well, both are important, um, and sometimes we have to do things we don't like, mm -hmm. just yeah. like life. <laughs> so you may not like cardio, but it's good for you to do a little bit of cardio. Yeah. And it's not like you need massive amounts of cardio. You don't need to be running at a Usain Bolt pace mm -hmm. every single day. <laughs> um, but to even get like a good brisk walk-in mm -hmm. a few times a week uh, can be super beneficial for your health. And same thing with strength training. Uh, that can do a lot for your um not just your, your muscle composition, but mm -hmm. also for your bone health. Mm -hmm. So really important to get both in. You might end up doing a little more yeah. of one than the other just because mm -hmm. you like one yeah. uh, more than the other. But again, like it's better to do something than yeah. nothing. Mm -hmm. if, yeah, if, you're, if you can get 30 minutes of one thing, it's better than to not get any. Okay, Absolutely. and we were talking about this earlier. Is there actually, I mean, it sounds like there'd be, it's obviously better to get into the habit early, um, but is it, I don't want to say too late because it's never too late, <laughs> but are there advantages to starting a little earlier in life? Can you still get back in it? Is there a point where it's like you should really get in before this <laughs> time? <laughs> mm -hmm. Does that make sense? You know? Yeah. <laughs> when 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 do you just dig the grave? And yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's never too late to get started. Obviously, the earlier you start and the more you stay with it, the easier it's going to be because mm -hmm. your body already is preconditioned. You kind of know what you're doing. Um, but again, like, don't let that discourage you if you haven't gotten started yet. Um, I actually read a really great book. I wish I remember the name now. Mm -hmm. um, but it was about starting uh, strength training later in life. Mm -hmm. And my mom has Graves' disease, actually. Mm -hmm. And she uh, she has issues with her bone health sure. because mm -hmm. of that. And I told her, I was like, you need to start strength training now, even though we're going to be starting small and it might not be crazy mm -hmm. weights. But that's going to help you long term. If you want to be able to pick up your grandkids later, you got to yeah. you got to start that now. Better late than never. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I went, I had that in my head that I was not a high school athlete. I didn't do sports. So it's sort of beyond what I can do to get in the gym. I think so many people have that mental block. I know I did of like, it's not for me. Mm -hmm. How do you approach that? How do you get over that? Ooh, yeah, I mean, that's a tough one. A lot yeah. of people are feeling that too. And um, it's one of those things where you, you just got to find again something that you're passionate about but the first step is walking through the door mm. um so if it is even you know maybe i'm just going to go in there and i'm going to check out what the bathrooms look like today sure. what color towels do they have <laughs> um just getting like comfortable going in and just being yeah. like I, I saw it i did it now i can um you know slowly start to ease my way into it a little mm. bit and finding the different spaces too yeah. a lot of gyms have a, a corner that you can go into mm. and know <laughs> i don't feel like everyone's watching me mm -hmm. and, and i feel like i can try some stuff out maybe it's not right or mm -hmm. Um, you know, maybe I'm learning this movement, but eventually I'll get there and this yeah. is where I can start to feel that. Yeah. Do you have tips for getting over self-consciousness at the yeah. gym? You know, because uh, I feel like there's that mental block of getting yourself in there and then, you know, seeing all the people who look like they know what they're doing <laughs> <laughs> yeah. in the gym and trying to fit in, you know? Yeah. yeah uh, we call it gym timidation. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's very, very real. Sure. Um, and it can be real, too, for people that have been working out for forever. Mm -hmm. I mean, even as a female in the gym, sometimes when, when we're lifting weights together, I get a little self-conscious because they're mm -hmm. bigger guys yep. next yeah. to you. But the important thing is, um, again, just doing a little bit at a time. So mm -hmm. if you might not be comfortable at first, spend just 10 minutes, mm -hmm. five minutes. Again, better than zero minutes. Mm -hmm. And and then bringing friends along with you, too, because okay. there is a lot of strength in yeah. numbers. Yeah. Absolutely. That... Uh, that feeling of yeah are people looking at me mm -hmm. are they laughing at me because they don't know how to do a deadlift and they're kind of <laughs> screwing it up right now <laughs> um is that a thing in the gym is people who work in the gym day in day out are you all looking at other people and judging them and critiquing them in your heads absolutely no I'm kidding. no, no. <laughs> we're, just, yeah. we're just making sure you put your equipment away honestly. yeah that's all we want yeah. <laughs> i did once hear someone under their breath criticizing someone's squat and it was so strange mm -hmm. because the next day i just saw him like at the mm -hmm. grocery store <laughs> and did anyway. you judge what he was buying at the yeah grocery? I, was, I was really i tried to really lay it on you know right. i don't know that's not really important but i thought that yeah. was good. Yeah. <laughs> that made me a little nervous but yeah, yeah. um I, I think we all think that people are looking at us yeah. when really i think most people are looking at themselves mm -hmm. thinking the mm -hmm. exact same thing we're thinking yeah. yeah yeah if i could go back you said of like finding an area and you all are at smith center which we're very fortunate to have here uh on the campus where we're recording um, and I remember when I was going there, I found the furthest away little corner 
away from everybody that I was like, it's me by myself. No one like this is my space and my space only. And it was huge. Like having that sort of mentality that you can hide somewhere. And then yeah. when you're ready, <laughs> sneak over there. Uh, wait, you turned around there. and faced the wall. <laughs> yeah, don't look at me. <laughs> I kind of right. was that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, do you have any tips for picking a gym? I don't know if this mm. is really related to that, but are there any immediate signs of like, this is probably not a good space in general? Is it different for everyone? Um, yeah, yeah, any advice there? Well, obviously... Anyone who is a full-time employee should sure. definitely take advantage of the Smith Center. <laughs> um, but in in all seriousness, uh, you want something that is easy to get to, mm -hmm. realistic for you to get to, uh, something you can afford, mm -hmm. something that have the, has the programs that are going to get you really excited. Mm -hmm. uh, again, just thinking about how it's going to fit into life as yeah. a whole. And that's going to be different for everybody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like you're calling me out with the full time gym. <laughs> <laughs> so, <Little. laughs> on that note, um, do you need a fancy gym? Do you need the the equinoxes? Do you need the whatever those are? Um, what do you actually need out of a gym space? Um, again, I think it's it's what you want to get out of it. Mm -hmm. Some people are motivated by. Sure maybe paying a higher fee because they know they're sure. paying the higher fee. It's going to keep them accountable. They might like all the extra amenities. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's, it's the shower. It's the, it's the towel. It's, yeah. it's a butler in the bathroom, sure. <laughs> but <laughs> I don't know. I've never had a butler in my <laughs> bathroom, but um, that might call to some people mm -hmm. and some people might just need, Hey, I just need a set of dumbbells and a, and a treadmill mm -hmm. that, that works. Yep. Sure. <laughs> and, and that just works for some people. So yeah. again, like it's, it's what's going to meet your needs and going to get you excited to get through that door. Yeah. 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 And, and on that note too, a lot of it is, uh, can I, you know, get to the gym today if I can't like outside the sidewalk sure. is a part of my gym that day. I'm just going to walk, just going to do mm -hmm. something. Um, if you're just sitting at home and you're like, I can't afford dumbbells right now, yeah. you can find something in your house to mm -hmm. use as a weight that is manageable to still get there. And, sure. and even that's something too, where I'm still trying to find what that feeling is for me, what gym works mm -hmm. for me. You can start now. It doesn't have to be when I get the membership. It doesn't mm. have to be, you know, point. when I get into the door. New you Year's. Can, <laughs> yeah, it, it doesn't have to be a timeline. You could start mm -hmm. right now yeah. just mm -hmm. with something small. Yeah. So kind of related to that, I feel like I hear people talk about uh, just adding, making small changes mm -hmm. to your daily life, like taking the stairs instead of the elevator. I work on the first floor here, so it's not really, <laughs> I just take the stairs anyway. No. Um, do you, are there any tips like that that you feel like, are important or good to know that's yeah. probably the big one but yeah <laughs> no that's 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 really good just little habits are important um i'm really bad at drinking water mm. so uh, i actually have a little uh water bottle that blinks to remind me <laughs> to drink water yeah uh, and sometimes you need that little external push too so yeah. finding finding things that that'll push you a little bit more to do something mm. that might not be in your routine right now yeah yeah, it's definitely starting small, too. Um, your body is really good at adapting at what you want mm -hmm. it to do, but it has to be something you're willing to put the effort into. And sure. if you, you know, are restricting yourself or anywhere, you're going to hours at the gym where that you're just coming back exhausted yeah. by the end of the week. Um, it, it's really making sure that this is sustainable because your body's going to get good at doing it as you do it. Mm. Right. Um, so if you're like, I'm going to the gym every day for, you know, three hours a day, <laughs> it's you're going to get exhausted sure. yeah. and it's going to take a long time for your body to adapt to yeah. it. So you're going to be smaller, like this gym thing. Yeah. You know, and <laughs> it sucks. It's, it's starting off at that, you know, the 20 minutes and then your body adapts. You get really good. And then you're yeah. like, yeah. maybe I can stay for 45 this time. And it, and it gets yeah. better slowly. Yeah. I found time of day really helped for me too. Sure. Because mm -hmm. I realized yeah. now that I've started my first nine to five, I'm like, I don't want to do anything after five o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to sit there. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. finding, even though I was, didn't think I was a morning person, being like, I think that's the only time I'm going to be able to like. It's possible to become one. Yeah. You don't yeah. think you can, but yeah. And, uh, it's possible. I'm trying to. I'm trying to do it. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not gonna make anything. I'm not gonna say anything on camera. Yeah. <laughs> um, if oh. we could go back to that that yeah. point of like when you're starting, knowing that it's okay to be a beginner, like what how do you start to set realistic goals for yourself because obviously it's like i'm gonna have a summer body within six weeks of starting this or i'm gonna deadlift 500 within my first month of like <laughs> check <what> and check <laughs> 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 what how do you start to set realistic expectations and goals for yourself when you're just a beginner at this yeah i would say um again start start small mm -hmm. so if if you want to make sure that you're taking the stairs every day, mm -hmm. maybe you start with once a week and sure. then that turns into twice a week, three times a week. If you want to set some of those bigger goals, like you want to be able to deadlift 500 pounds, yeah. 
then that's when you recruit a personal trainer, sure. right? And make sure you're building safely too, because mm. there's so much stuff on the internet right now that can really <laughs> scare some newbies and kind of yeah. send them along those tracks that yeah. may not be the safest. That was actually going to be my next question was, yeah. I feel like there's a lot of the other intimidation elements, but I think there's also a big fear of injuring yourself, both mm -hmm. in the short term and then even in the long term, because I feel like you could be working out, feel like you're doing it and if you're doing one thing wrong mm -hmm. it could be a surgery you know years mm -hmm. down the line do you have any tips for that you already mentioned the kind of overwhelming info of the internet mm -hmm. um i feel like i even have a fear when it's a personal trainer i'm like who knows <laughs> who knows where did, where did you get your, your degree <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean it, it's one of those where y you know your body better than anybody else you know what mm -hmm. it feels like so if you're nervous about you know a different type of uh exercise mm -hmm. Start with lighter weight, start body weight, feel mm -hmm. it out. Mm -hmm. um, there's a ton of resources online with the positive and neg negatives of it all, as long as you find one that has the science to back it up. Mm -hmm. Pretty much any personal training certification also has a free exercise library on the website that goes through form, goes through how to, mm -hmm. um, they usually have videos or step-by-step -step if you'd rather read it. Mm -hmm. um, so there's good resources out there that have the special things that are sure. gonna make sure that you're not gonna hurt yourself yeah. later. Um, and just making sure you're finding the correct ones that are backed by science to help you out yeah. to get yeah. there if you do feel like you're more injury prone for some reason or mm -hmm. just worried about that are there any sports or activities that you think are safer or would recommend I, I would start with some of the lower impact things so um, like your spin classes your cycle classes those are pretty low mm -hmm. impact um, a lot of weightlifting you can do at lighter weights mm -hmm. and higher reps and still get the same health benefits as you would with heavy weight and lower reps mm -hmm. Um, and then any sort of, uh, again, non-impact cardio, uh, like an elliptical, um, a, a stationary bike, uh, things like that are just easy ways to sort of ease yourself into it, find out those limits, and then you can sort of test them as you get more comfortable. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We've mentioned personal trainers here. Yeah. Uh, it sounds pretty fancy, a little expensive. Um, but speaking from personal experience, that's how I got my start with a wonderful woman named Judy, yes. a colleague of yours, <laughs> who once made me go blind, but that's a <laughs> story for another day. <laughs> Unrelated uh, to this next piece of advice. <laughs> <laughs> no, she was great at sort of introing me to everything and walking me through it. Um, is that something that's uh, realistic for people thinking, you know, starting out, maybe money's tight. How can you sort of get that training directly? Are there ways to, to find it? Yeah, I mean, uh, at in our facility mm -hmm. specifically, yeah. uh, we have small packages, and it's not necessarily, hey, you're gonna you're gonna meet with this person every week right. for the rest of your life. Yep. You're mm -hmm. stuck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, maybe it's just, hey, I need three sessions yeah. just so I feel comfortable and know what I'm doing. It doesn't have to be this massive yeah. life change. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And a lot of trainers too will take the time, and if you're telling them, I want to learn how to do stuff. Can mm -hmm. you teach me how to write programs so I have two more sessions with you mm -hmm. and I want to use them in two months from now yeah. so I can build on that program? They're willing to sit down and talk with you. Um, a lot of them aren't there to just, you know, make you go blind. <laughs> uh, they're, they're there to help you. And if you just let them know and ask, they're more than willing to uh, yeah. write, help you learn how to write things the correct way. Yeah, yeah ha having that conversation with your trainer and setting those goals with mm -hmm. them early will also give you the idea of, is this the right trainer for me? Because mm -hmm. maybe that person is more, oh, uh, I, I just really want to work with you to get you strong. I mm -hmm. think you need to do it with just me. Mm -hmm. If you're having that conversation early, you'll you'll get a good feel yeah. for if they're a good fit for yeah. you and what you want. If they're asking about you, your goals, your needs, things like that. Yeah, yeah. how much yeah. you value your site. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> for the record, I didn't have breakfast, and so I was just a little, <laughs> a little woozy. <laughs> um, okay, so for people that you see at the gym or people get just getting started, even people who have been in yeah. doing it for a while, what are the biggest mistakes, misconceptions you feel like you hear or see at the gym or with people? Uh, I'd say a big one is um, like spot training. People want to go in and they mm. just want to lose weight in their belly or sure. lose weight in their arms. Mm -hmm. And I think that we need to look at, at our fitness more holistically mm -hmm. and, and think, okay, this is going to be a good place for me to release all the stress of the day. I will get some health benefits yeah. and it might not be exactly where I want it right away, mm -hmm. but there will be health benefits if I just kind of stick to it and uh, create that routine for myself. I think that's probably the biggest one I see at least. Yeah. And it takes time too. It's not, 
It's not going to be, you know, it happens overnight. Mm -hmm. And in the progress, if you don't see it right away, that doesn't mean something yeah. good isn't happening on the inside. Um, it, your mood can just get so much better. You can sleep better and you don't mm -hmm. even notice it. You don't mm -hmm. see it. So mm -hmm. um, letting, letting it take the time it needs to start to see those benefits and even start to write down what you notice. Yeah. Um, you, if it's one of those, oh, I didn't even realize I slept eight hours last night and I've been mm -hmm. getting five. That, mm -hmm. That's huge. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, how do you track progress in a healthy way? How do, how do you, s like, a week, a month, six weeks, mm -hmm. a year out, what what should you expect to see or not see? Uh, yeah, I, I think, again, progress looks different for everybody, mm -hmm. especially depending on where you are in your journey. Uh, for me, uh, I do a lot of self-reflection, and mm -hmm. I'm a big advocate for that and mm -hmm. journaling and all sure. that good stuff. So for me, it's writing down how I feel about what I'm doing and seeing if I'm still making those positive benefits. Because there is a point too where you can be in a routine and then mm -hmm. fall out of love with what you're doing yeah. and need to mix it back up again. So it does take a little bit of effort on your end, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> good things do that sometimes. <laughs> um, but for me, it is that self-reflection. But for other people, it might be, hey, I like the way my clothes fit today. Or hey, I like the way I feel when I leave the gym. Mm -hmm. Or I'm getting better better scores on my uh, in my spin class. Whatever yeah. that may be, I, I think it's different depending on who you are and kind of what motivates you. Sure. Yeah, I think at the end of the day too, if, if it's six months from now, a year from now, are you still happy? Mm -hmm. Are you still like, I'm excited to go to the gym and continue it? Mm -hmm. um, with mixing it up, I mean, as long as you're happy with what you're doing, that's the best progress you can yeah. have really. Yeah, I think for me it was when I started noticing like, oh, I, I miss the gym. And that is not an emotion I ever had before <laughs> in my life. That's when I thought, oh, maybe, maybe this is doing something for me. So. My my husband knows when I didn't work out that sure. day. It's like, <laughs> well, you just go for a run or something and come back, circle back. Yeah, uh, I do feel like weirdly, I haven't been going that long, but I immediately noticed yeah. back problems were alleviated mm -hmm. just from doing some basic strength training. Yeah. So it's huge. Now yeah. I can never stop. <laughs> uh, okay, so we're mostly talking about fitness, but I feel like we should at least maybe mention diet and how that factors in um, to yeah. as much as I don't want to. Um, <laughs> I do remember feeling really discouraged. I was like, wait, you have to do both. <laughs> um, and, you know, this could factor into setting your goals. Maybe that's too much at once to be changing everything in your life. Mm. But what are some important starting, you know, pieces of advice for incorporating a better diet, um, a diet that accompanies working out a more active lifestyle. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's definitely important to know that you need to find what works for you because mm -hmm. what you eat, what you eat, what you eat, what I eat is yeah. all going to be different um, depending on what our goals are and, and uh, who we are, right? What our body's made up of. So um, definitely talking to either hiring a registered dietitian mm -hmm. or talking to your primary care doctor and seeing what those goals are specifically for you. Mm -hmm. Good resources though are my plate. That's always a solid sure. one to just sort of get you started a little bit. Gives you a good general guideline of, of what, what mm -hmm. you need. Yeah. yeah, and remembering too, food, f food is gonna be fuel for your body. So making sure you're eating enough, you're drinking yeah. enough water. Um, you know, you start to feel headaches and maybe you're like, now my head hurts, I don't wanna go to the gym. It's yeah. your body's way of trying to tell you I need something right now. Um, so just listening to your body and knowing that food's not a bad thing. It's gonna yeah. help you, it's gonna make your progress better. Um, so just making sure that, you know, if you need a light up water bottle, you get one. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's also yeah. good to note too that just because you, you enjoy like things like cookies or french mm -hmm. fries doesn't mean you have to get rid of them entirely <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. um just in moderation mm -hmm. i think is definitely important to keep in the back of our minds because i think sometimes we punish ourselves when sure. we're enjoying certain foods mm -hmm. um and that's what they are their enjoyment you should be able to enjoy okay. them yeah. Yeah. i feel like i hear this is somewhat related the terms bulking and cutting a lot in the gym it's not something i've really paid too much attention to mm -hmm. is that anything you're not bodybuilding james <laughs> <Yeah. Is that laughs> Maybe I just live with a bodybuilder. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, I feel like he brings that up sometimes sure. in terms of diet and how to. And I did look into it and I was like, oh, I feel like I'm actually, even if I weren't exercising, under eating a little bit protein wise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, are there are things you should be considering in terms of yeah, protein intake and other should 
you know, we don't have to get into supplements or anything, mm-hmm. but other things you should consider in that realm. Yeah. Um, when it comes to the, the bodybuilding world, yeah. they have a very specific set of needs as, with carbs, mm-hmm. fats, uh, protein, and that all changes based off of what phase they're in. So mm-hmm. whether it be the, the bulking or the cutting or, you know, maintaining yeah. in between, it changes crazily yeah. and I, it is not something i would ever get into myself yeah. because it's a lot of thinking yeah. <laughs> and mm-hmm. a lot of planning it's and power chicken t- breasts yes and yeah, and yeah, yeah and tilapia yeah, yeah. power to That's them you feel like for, i hear that from every celebrity it's like i just ate a lot of chicken breasts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 and again power to them for that because that is uh definitely a discipline yeah. that i don't have myself <laughs> but um for just a average gym goer again it's going to be very specific to who you are um Again, typically what the uh, United States recommends, right, Mm -hmm. on my plate is about 50% uh, carbs, 30% proteins, 20% fats. Mm -hmm. But again, that's going to change based off of what your goals are Mm -hmm. and what you want to do, which is why you would ask that registered dietitian what exactly you might need at that time. Yeah. I recognize as the the man on this podcast asking this question is a little strange but i hear from a lot of uh of my girlfriends that they're afraid to lift weights because they don't want to get too bulky and look like a bodybuilder which as you say all that work to become a bodybuilder feels a little (laughs) silly but could you address that sort of concern of i don't want to get too bulky yeah um women have a certain set of testosterone Mm -hmm. (laughs) that men have more of Mm -hmm. right so uh it is Uh, Another kind of myth is that women think that lifting weights will Mm. make them bulky because they see their male counterparts lift Mm. and they start to get a little bit Mm -hmm. thicker. (laughs) And uh, again, women are different and some girls may put on more muscle faster than some Mm -hmm. other women might not. Uh, So everybody's a little different. We're all Mm -hmm. wonderful snowflakes. (laughs) 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 Uh, But it's not like all of a sudden you're going to look like one of those... uh, uh, bodybuilders you see at you know competitions exactly or, yeah. exactly i'm trying to be a bulky snowflake <laughs> if it was that easier i think i'd be in a different place in my life right now. <laughs> uh, so we're coming up on the end here are there any is there anything else that maybe we didn't cover anything that you're like these are here's some quick tips here's something easy to remember um if you're going to leave this podcast with anything you know take this with you mm-hmm. that you want to add yeah uh start small Find what you love Mm -hmm. um, and remember it's not going to happen overnight. It takes time. So make sure it fits in your schedule Mm -hmm. and that you enjoy doing it. It'll fit so much easier. Yeah. Yeah. I would I would also say try something new. Why not? Mm -hmm. You might you might find out you've been missing out on a really cool part of fitness you've never (laughs) tried before. Yeah. Do you have any other last? I've been thinking for me something that was really helpful was to identify and remove any barriers from going to the gym or doing fitness. So like. If I'm going to go in the morning, I need to have all my supplies, clothes, everything mm-hmm. laid out, ready, done, so that I can't be that lazy in the morning. Like, ah, oh, yeah. so identify those barriers and cut them out as much as you can. So. Yeah, well, I think this was all great advice. Thank you guys so much for, Thank for you. coming on the show. Thanks yeah, for thanks us. for having us. We appreciate it. Yeah, thanks to Javi for guest co-hosting with me. Today. As your boss, I made you do this. Yeah. So. <laughs> Um, threat of termination. No, <laughs> just, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you guys for listening to Don't Say Adulting. Keep tuning in for more episodes about uh, you know, all the little all the little problems that come up. You know, and all an the adult. big solutions. Yeah, all the huge, offer. yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and all we have to offer here. Uh, no, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you guys next time. Don't Say Adulting is a Grotter Network podcast produced by Jane O'Connor, Kevin DeClute, and Josh Long. Additional production and editing done by Kevin DeClute. Graphics and animation by Becky Rogers. Grouter Network is director Javi Zubi Zaretta, senior producer Josh Long, senior content editor Jesse McCartney, art director Becky Rogers, senior manager for community engagement Mike Rossetti, social media manager Adrian Garaldi, web content strategist Michaela Douglas, Producer Kevin DeClute, associate producer Jane O'Connor. Special thanks to our guest and Notre Dame Studios. Mm-hmm.